Oh man, you gotta take a deep breath after that one. Well, all I've gotta say is, holy Toledo, it was a tough weekend. But luckily, I cashed on my double ups in 50-50s, and I didn't do any head-to-heads. Who I wish I had, I had set up a time lapse, um, just showing my day of me watching the games and Man, a lot of things went wrong, but a lot of things went right. And yeah, just so let's just get started. I hope you all are having a better day than Hugh Jackson. I actually had a Hugh Jackson rant to to tell you guys. Like before he got fired, I was gonna come on and just say how is a coach three, thirty six, and one over three seasons and still have a job. I mean, Jeff Fisher couldn't pull it off. Um, but then got fired, and then I was gonna come on like, man, how do you get fired over um, an offensive coordinator that whose main shtick is to come in, throw the ball a ton, and get into fights with his players and coaches? Um, but then you know, Todd Haley just got fired. Uh, I mean, I wonder how that went. You know, Hugh Jackson went to the owner and the GM and was like, you know, uh, I want to start calling plays again. I'm just going to save my job. I think we can start winning. Um, but just, can you just fire Todd Haley for me? And then they're just like, um, you hired Todd Haley just a few months ago. So I think that popped in the idea. Let's just, let's just get rid of both of them. But how do you get rid of someone... Like, I know I said, how, how do you not get rid of someone that, that bad? But there's, in the, in the middle of the season, unless you have someone in mind ready to go, I mean, this is a team that is kind of doomed from the start. They, they traded away their uh, Carson Wentz pick. Um, instead of picking Carson Wentz, they went with Baker Mayfield. Um, they could have got rid of Hugh Jackson year, like last year or two years ago. Um, and they could have grabbed, you know, Sean McVay, Matt Nagy, um, to work with Carson Wentz. But no, they passed on that, so they're kind of doing from the start, so who knows. So let's moving on. Um, happy Monday to you all. Um, let's just get right into it. Uh, my James Winston pick, I still feel like that was, that was a good pick. Um, and I watched most of the game, and he was, I don't know what he was doing half the time. He was, th- he was like three of the four receivers would be wide open, and then he'd throw to the one that's double covered and throw over the middle late, right to um, the Bengals' defense. Um, so, and then had he not gotten benched, even though how bad he played, um, he would have gotten eight to ten more points. But he was definitely the first uh, cause for stress for me uh, yesterday. But even so, he didn't look like his old self. Like when he played the Falcons, he just, or even last week, he took the ball and ran a lot. And, went, and would run for 50 yards a game. Today, he I felt like he forgot how to run. He didn't want to, there's like three or four times where he could have picked up 8 to 10 yards and just didn't. He just sat in the pocket, tried to throw, and would just throw it away or get hit. Get sacked. So, don't know what's going on there, but we survived. Um, James Conner, you know, that's... He fits the process, you know, run the ball, higher price, running backs at home against bad run defenses. Cream Hunt, um, yeah, he, he should have had a better day. I didn't watch the game. I don't know what happened. Um, but then, you know, the Todd Gurley, I don't, like the 36% you see right there, that's the most um, in any contest that played Todd Gurley. Usually he's come up at like 31, 32%. And I don't know, um, people must not be watching these Rams games. Luckily, I think I'm very fortunate uh, that's my team. So I get to watch all these games. And like yesterday, if even if Gurley struggles and only gets five or six touches in the first half, um, McVay is coming out in the second half and calling five or six run plays, running Gurley and creatively, not just up the middle, where he's throwing to him five or six straight times, getting him going. And eventually, um, the opposing defense usually wears down in the fourth quarter. Gurley just runs wild with the lead, which is exactly what happened. 
Um, I was a little mad because not that he uh, gave up that touchdown at, at the end, but mostly um, after he, he caught like a 50-yard pass for a touchdown. It was a crossing route. He caught it within five yards and ran the rest of the way. Um, after that, they didn't really throw to him at all. And that was like mid-third quarter. I thought he was going to have three or four more grabs for 50 more yards and another touchdown. But, you know, it worked out. I don't know why that number's calling me. Uh, stupid solicitors. Or scam artists. Um, Herndon. Oh, we got lucky. We got very lucky. But I had Nojoku in my line for all week. And that's another thing. I never trusted Brown's players. Not even Jarvis Landry. Because this is exactly what happens. Najoku didn't even get a target. And they're just playing one of the worst defenses against tight ends. And they're losing the whole game. I don't understand how that happens. But Herndon. <coughs> um, I wish he would have got a couple more uh, grabs, receptions. But he didn't. But he got a touchdown. Like a late garbage uh, time touchdown. Um, Godwin. Um, if you didn't watch the game, you might well, you might think this is a bad pick, but honestly, he was open, wide open, three or four times with no one around him, and Jameis just simply overthrew him. Like, he overthrew him by, like, 10 feet over his head. And, yeah, and then Fitzpatrick comes in, and he has um, a reception. It's weird. He had, they didn't count his two-point conversion as a reception he should have 8.2 points i think but anyways um i figured he'd get good for 10 to 15 and humphreys would be good for like eight well it all adds up together um humphreys had an awesome day um if you didn't watch the game both him and james got screwed over um humphreys caught a pass and was tackled like an inch away from the goal line and it that cost us ten points. I mean, he was short, but they reviewed. They called it a touchdown and reviewed it. And usually those don't get overturned. You really couldn't see much, but they overturned it. And so I mean, Humphreys, that would have put him at twenty, and I would put Jameis at sixteen. Um, and that would have been that would have sealed the day. Um, but yeah, um, Emmanuel Sanders. Not sure what happened there. Uh, this is my second time rostering him, and whenever I put him on, in the lineup, he doesn't do much. Um, but, you know, I think the process was right, picking receivers against bad pass defenses. And, um, what am I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say. But the Steelers' defense, everyone was going to have it. So, yeah, um, it's always nice when, um, when you finish ahead of people who... Provide lines for other people. I think, oh, at least the most vocal ones um, on YouTube. Um, yeah, we passed them up. I don't think they, they even placed in the double ups. So that's good. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Um, coming next uh, in a few hours. So if you're watching this in the future, hello. Um, hope the weather's good. And. Um, my whole point about that was uh, you can watch um, my first look lineups, which are, uh, I did like seven or eight different combinations, and I think I have a pretty good lineup you can put in on Sunday. So, yeah, um, until next time, I will, um, oh, be sure to comment um, if you disagree or agree with something, or, you know, if this helped you, if my advice helped you this week, please comment, uh, please like, share with people who might need help. Um, this is what I'm here for, and uh, definitely hit that subscribe button and bell notification if you haven't already. Alright, my next video should be up, should be up in a couple hours. Thanks guys.